The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1 You will hear a conversation between a travel agent and a customer. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 7. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 7. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to get some information about trips to New Zealand. Uh, certainly. Take a seat and I'll be right with you. Thanks. Now, where would you like to go in New Zealand? Well, I was hoping to do a bit of travelling around, actually. There are a few things I'd like to see and do before I go back home. Right. One thing I really want to do is go to Christchurch. I have relatives living there that I can stay with, my mother's cousin, and I've heard it's a nice place. Yes, it's a lovely city, and staying with relatives will help with the budget, of course. The budget? It will save you some money. Oh, right. Well, I'm not too worried about that. I've saved quite a bit of money working in Australia. Oh, that's nice. Good for you. Uh, well, you know that New Zealand consists of two main islands, the North Island and the South Island, and Christchurch is on the South Island. Is it? I was never very good at geography at school. <laughs> Do you have a map I could look at? Uh, sure. Uh, here we are. Right, I see. And, well, then I'd also like to spend some time in Auckland, and maybe I could do an English language course there. Can you organise that sort of thing for me? Oh, certainly. We'd be happy to arrange that. Uh, but bear in mind that Auckland is in the North Island. OK. And I'd also like to do some skiing or maybe even some snowboarding. I hear New Zealand is a great place for that. Yes, absolutely. But... You should go to Auckland first for your studies and then you can get the ferry across to the South Island and take the bus down to the snow. Oh, I don't like boats very much. <laughs> I'm not much of a sailor. I think I would prefer to fly. <laughs> right. Um, what about joining a walking tour? That could be really fun. Not sure about walking, but... Joining a tour might be a good way to travel because then I might make some friends my own age. Now, let's get some details. Uh, can I have your name, please? Yes, it's Su Ming Li, but you can call me Sue. <laughs> OK, Sue. And what's your address here in Melbourne? I'm living with my aunt in the suburb of Kew. It's 29 Lock Street. That's L-O-C-H, not L-O-C-K. Do you have a phone number that I can get you on? The best thing would be if I give you my mobile. I always have it on me. It's 0402 558 992. OK. And uh, when do you want to travel? Because you'll need to be down south in July or August. Oh, yes, of course. That's winter, isn't it? So I'd better go to Auckland in May. Yes, let's say um, departing from Melbourne on the 1st of May. That's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then you could begin your course on Monday the 3rd. That sounds great. And how long would you like to study for? Um, a month, two, three? What do you think? Well, I'll probably need more than a month. Uh, what about eight weeks until the end of June? Fine. I'll see what I can do. Oh, and uh, how would you like to pay for this? On my visa card, if that's possible. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10.
Now listen and answer questions 8 to 10. Hello Sue, it's Angelo from Cosmos Travel here. I've booked your flight and I've found you an English college called the Harbour Language Centre. Great. Where exactly is that? Uh, well, have you got that little map I gave you yesterday? Uh, yes. You see where the harbour is with the three wharves and the water? Yes, got that. OK, there are two parallel streets. Key Street, that's Q-U-A-Y, and Customs Street. The building where the college is located is on Key Street, opposite Prince's Wharf. Right, got it. And what about accommodation? Well, I've booked you into a hotel for the first three nights and then the accommodation officer will find you a family to live with. Good. And where's the hotel? It's a short walk from the college, on the corner of Queen Street and City Road. Which corner exactly? On the left-hand side as we're looking at the map. OK. Near the little park? Yes, that's right. And what about a good bookshop? I'm going to need to buy a dictionary and some English books. Yes, well, I believe there's a really good language bookshop on the corner of Customs Street and Queen Street. It's near the college, so that's pretty convenient. Thank you so much. You've been really helpful. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You'll hear three university students talking about a presentation which one of them has to give. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. First, look at questions 11 to 14. Listen carefully. Hi, Joe. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Paul. Oh, hi, Paul. I've heard you've been stressing out about your presentation on art. I am. Are you still going to talk about the different types of art? Yes. Well, I was planning to, but there's so much stuff on the subject that I'm finding it difficult to put it all into one short presentation. Huh. I usually have the opposite problem. There's nothing worse than going blank, forgetting your words in front of a group of people. Well, the problem is that I don't know how to organize what I want to say in the presentation. Well, you know everything there is to know about the subject. It's just a question of selecting what you want to talk about. Well, there's a lot to discuss about the different periods in art. That's a good way to start. Then. You can bring in how specific types of art were popular in each period. Yes, like how sculpture was popular in the Classical period and paintings were popular in the Renaissance period. And how now a wide variety of media are used to create modern art. As long as you keep it concise, because it's a large area, there are so many periods and movements in art, and you don't want to just list them one by one. 
I agree. An explanation of the movements and appearance in art wouldn't be too long. You're right. I need to just pick out some key points, just mention the periods quickly so that I can move on to the real topic of the presentation. Yes, the variety of art, like sculpture, paintings, installations. I have an idea. Why don't you prepare a timeline to show to the class? That would be a nice visual and it would focus your ideas so you don't get too sidetracked. Great idea. It would certainly cut down on time. Right then. Where are we? You'll begin with a very short introduction to the historical periods of art. Then, you'll talk about popular types of art within these periods. That's sorted. Maybe you could also mention some key works of art in each period, like the Venus de Milo statue or the screen by Edvard Munch, and give some interesting facts on them. That's not a bad idea. Because it does give people a frame of reference when I talk about specific kinds of art. After giving a historical context, I should really talk about different forms of art, shouldn't I? Yes, you should. After that, you can conclude with a question on what is considered to be art. Now, that would be really interesting. Yes, comparing the traditional views of art with modern views. Exactly. I think I'll have a collection of pictures, including famous pieces of art from classic to modern, projected on the wall, like the Mona Lisa and some pop art, and ask people whether they think it's art or not. Before the broadcast continues, look at questions 15 to 20. You will now listen to the second part of the talk. Showing some famous works and asking people what art is would certainly lead to discussion in the room. People's appreciation of art is so subjective, and it comes down to taste. That's what I'm hoping for, some disagreement to liven up the presentation. And you could stick in some really controversial ones like graffiti and modern art installations in between pieces of art that are universally accepted, like the work of the Renaissance painters. Sounds good to me. I have to say, I really don't understand some modern art myself. There was one recently that was just a pile of rubbish. It doesn't require much skill to create, does it? And what does it mean? There's no point to it. Actually, Joe, I like some modern art. It makes you look at the world in a different way. Artists now have the freedom to express themselves completely. Yes, but there is an idea now that anything can be art. I've heard of paintings being sold for large sums of money, which have been done by small children and animals. Now that's ridiculous. Oh, you could find one of those paintings and put it in your presentation, couldn't you, Paul? That would really be interesting. Well, Paul, what do you think? I like it. Just thinking. I'll need to do some more research to find pictures for the slideshow. Yes, we can help you, can't we, Joe? Of course. If you go to the fine art section of the library, I'm sure you'll find everything you need. Just ask the staff and they'll give you access to a slide bank of hundreds of famous works of art. And if you still can't find what you're looking for, use the library computers to go online. There are lots of images on the internet. Of course, you'll need to use a search engine like Google, but it's dead easy. Thanks, guys. I'm feeling much clearer about the project. Your ideas have been really useful. I think I should end with a quote of some kind by a famous artist. What do you think? That's a good idea. Now let's go to the library and see what they have. That is the end of part two. 
You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between Caesar and a welfare officer. As you listen, answer questions eleven to twenty. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty one to twenty six. Good afternoon. My name's Caesar Bautisto. Hello, I'm Wendy, one of the welfare officers. Can I help you? Yes, I have to move out of my accommodation in two weeks, and I can't find anywhere else to live. Okay, I'll need to know some details about your current situation. I'm an overseas student. From the Philippines, the college gave me a temporary room for one month. I can't find anywhere else, and I have no money. Have you told the college about your position, or asked them to let you stay longer in your accommodation? No, not yet. I, I didn't think that would be possible. Well, we can contact the accommodation service on your behalf to see if they'll let you stay a little longer, until you can find an alternative. Thank you. But I'm not sure that I can find another place, as they all ask for money before moving in, and I don't have any. Yes, it is usual in this country for landlords to ask for up to a month's rent in advance. Don't you have any money at all? Hardly any. I'm waiting for my grant check to be sent from the Philippines at the moment. It should have been here for me to collect when I arrived in Britain, but it seems to have been lost. You can apply for emergency loan from the union if you want. The loan can be for up to two hundred pounds, and we ask for a postdated check for the same amount to be given to us, so that we can recover the money once you receive your grant check. That would be very good. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. I'll apply, but I'm still worried about how to find new accommodation. As I said earlier, we can ask the college to extend the time you're allowed to stay in your present accommodation. They may refuse, of course. Then what will happen? If the worst comes to the worst, the union may be able to provide some very short-term emergency accommodation. If you want me to. I'll contact one or two of the addresses on the notice board, and arrange for you to visit them. But what if they ask me for the rent in advance? I only have ninety pounds left, and I need that for food and books. It'll be all right. By the time they actually need the money, we'll have your emergency loan ready. Just fill in this application form, and write me a check for two hundred pounds, please, payable to the student union. Right, I'll do that. Thank you very much for your help. I'm feeling more optimistic now. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a lecture about dorm rooms. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen to the tape and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Welcome to your new home for the upcoming year. These dorm rooms are among the best in the nation and are the newest ones at this school. So I hope you will all learn to appreciate them and take good care of all the facilities here. I am Gina, and I will be residential advisor in this building for the year. Today, I am going to tell you about some of the programs and facilities that are available to you. I will also be telling you the rules that everyone is expected to abide by. I will be asking you to give me your full attention for the next few minutes. I will first tell you about the facilities that are available to you. The dining facility is located on the first floor of the building. It is open seven days a week from 7 a.m. to midnight. All the food offered to students is freshly made every day, and my own opinion is that the food is actually quite good. Feel free to come and grab a banana for breakfast, or sit down with a group of friends for dinner. Although your meals are served buffet style, please do not waste food. All students are expected to clean their own tables after meals. In the basement of this building, there is a gym and recreational hall. The gym has workout equipment such as treadmills and weight sets. In the recreational hall, there are ping pong tables and a pool table for student use. You must sign in when using this equipment, and you will be held responsible for any damages or losses. The gym and recreational hall are open daily from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. There is a kitchen located on the second floor of this building. Your dorm key will open this door. Inside, there is a refrigerator, a microwave, an oven, and a stove. This room is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you decide to cook a meal, please be considerate to all the students and clean up after yourself. You can use some food in here, but please do not make a mess. Some students do end up having their food eaten from the fridge, so be careful. Don't leave anything that looks like it tastes really good. Do not leave pots and pans lying around in the kitchen. Please store these in your room. There are many programs being sponsored by our building this year. One of the most popular is our Saturday morning outings. In the past years, these trips have included going fishing, hiking, cycling, ice skating, and even going to the beach. There will be a listing of scheduled events coming out soon. The university sponsors these trips, so transportation will be provided. However, there are usually some costs associated, though they are usually minimal. Our building also has a volleyball team. All students who live in this building are welcome to join. Last year, we won first place in the dorm league. Please sign up at the front desk if you are interested as soon as possible, as there are only twenty spaces available based on a first come, first serve rule. The last things I want to talk about are the rules of our building. I know rules can be boring, but they are necessary to ensure the welfare of everyone living here. First, noise levels must be kept to a minimum after 11 p.m. Many students have early classes, so for those of you that have the luxury of sleeping until 10, please don't stay up late making lots of noise. Secondly, all visitors must sign in at the front door. Even if you have friends that are regular visitors, they must still always sign in. This rule is to prevent theft and robbery from occurring. Thirdly, alcohol and drugs are not permitted in this dorm in any place or at any time. Lastly, just be safe and have a great time. University is the greatest time of your life, so make the most of it. Thank you all for your attention. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.